Hey, Math 20-2s. Today we're going to connect roots, zeros, and x-intercepts. So we'll combine a bunch of stuff that we already know. In this lesson, we're going to establish the relationship between the roots of an equation, the zeros of the corresponding function, and the x-intercepts of the graph of the function. So recall the zeros of a function. A zero of a function is the value of the independent variable, which makes the value of the function equal to zero. Zeros of the function can be found by solving the equation f at x equals zero. The zeros of the function are really the x-intercepts, all right? So find the zero of the function f, where f at x equals 2x minus 6. We were just said, we, we were just told that to find the zero of a function, you can solve the equation f at x is zero. So we're going to let f at x equals zero. So f at x becomes zero, that equals 2x minus 6. How do I solve that equation? Well, I'm going to add 6 to both sides, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So there is the 0 of the function. x equals 3. Inve investigation 1. Connecting roots, zeros, and x-intercepts of a linear relation. A linear relation. So we've been doing quadratic relations. Let's look at a linear relation, a line. The graph of y equals 2x minus 6 is shown. All right? Label that line as 2x minus 6. That's what y equals. Determine the x-intercept. Well, it looks like it crosses the x-axis here at 3. How would I find it algebraically to find the x-intercept? We let y equal 0. So 0 equals 2x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides and then divide by 2. So the x-intercept is 3. Great. So we've done it algebraically. Here we can see it on the graph. The x-intercept is 3. Determine the roots of the equation, 2x minus 6 equals 0. Well, if 2x minus 6 equals 0, we add 6 to both sides and divide by 2. So the root of the equation, 2x minus 6 is 0, is x equals 3. State the connection between the x-intercepts of the graph of y equals 2x minus 6 and the roots of the equation, 2x minus 6 equals 0. They are the same. Right? x is 3 in both cases. So the roots of this equation, when y is 0, is the exact same as finding the x-intercept of the graph. Use the results of class example 1 to state the connection between the roots of the equation, the 0 of the function, and the x-intercepts of the graph of y equals 2x minus 6. Again, the relationship is they are the same. All, right? all those things are the same. They all mean the same thing. Investigation 2, connecting roots, zeros, and x-intercepts of a quadratic relation. All right, we've graphed quads. They're parabolas, opening up or down. Jacques has determined the equation, the roots of the equation, x squared minus x minus 6 is 0. He wrote the equation in factored form and used the zero product law to determine the roots of the equation. Complete his work to solve for x. So x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. He factored it by inspection. The only way to x squared is to put an x in the front of each bracket. What two numbers have a sum of negative 1 and a product of negative 6? Those numbers are minus 3 and positive 2. He then used the zero product law, set each variable factor equal to 0, x minus 3 can equal 0, or x plus 2 can equal 0. And solve those simple equations. Here x is 3, here x is negative 2. So there are his solutions, x is 3 or x is negative 2. All right. The graph of y equals x squared minus x minus 6 is shown. State the x-intercepts of the graph and mark them on the grid. So this graph should be labeled as y equals x squared minus x minus 6. Looks like this x-intercept is at 3, and this x-intercept is at negative 2. Part C, consider the function g at x is x squared minus x minus 6. Determine the zeros of the function. Well, to find the zeros of the function, we let g at x equal 0. So 0 equals x squared minus x minus 6. Well, this equation we just solved right up here. Oop. We just solved that equation right up here. So the zero of the quadratic function 
is the same as the solution to the equation. It's the same as the x-intercepts of the function. So state the connection between the x-intercepts of the graph, the roots of the equation, and the zeros of the function. Again, they are all the same. All right. Fill in the blanks in the following statement regarding the equation y equals f at x. The blank of the function, the blank of the graph of the function, and the blank of the corresponding equation are the blank number. So the zeros of the function, the x-intercepts of the graph of the function, and the roots of the corresponding equation y equals zero are the same numbers. All right. So the graph of f at x equals x squared minus x minus six is shown. Fill in the blanks. The graph of f at x equals x squared minus x minus six has x-intercepts at negative two and positive three. And a y-intercept at, looks like the y-intercept here is at negative six. The function f at x equals x squared minus x minus 6 has factored form of f at x as x plus 2x minus 3. It has zeros at negative 2 and positive 3. And this equation has roots of negative 2 and positive 3. Very nice. They're all the same. Example 3 then. Consider the function 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Describe how the features of a graphing calculator can be used to determine the zeros of the function. Well, if you were to go ahead and graph on your calculator y equals 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 and find the zeros, find the x-intercepts by, if you go on your calculator, hit your second function button, and then above trace, you hit the calculate button, and you go on that menu to number two, zeros, you are finding the x-intercepts. And if you do that on your calculator, you're gonna find the zeros of the function. State the zeros of the function. So let's do it with our calculator. All right. Let's go to your y equals screen. Clear whatever you have there. Type in the function 2x squared. Oop. 2x squared. Wow. Come on, I'll get it. 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Great, and if we go zoom six, our standard viewing window, we'll see the quadratic function. To find the zeros, second function, calculate, and we go to number two, the zeros of the function. So how do I find the zeros of the x-intercepts? Follow the prompts. Left boundary, yep, where that cursor is looks good. Let's go to the right boundary. Let's get right of that first x-intercept, press enter. Make a guess, it's gonna find the x-intercept between those two boundaries. The first x-intercept is a half. Let's find the second one. Second calculate, the second zero. Number two, let's get left of our second boundary. Uh, second calculate, the zero. Left boundary, that should be fine. Right boundary. That should be fine. The second x-intercept looks to be three. All right, so let's state the zeros. The zeros are uh, one half and three. State the roots of the equation. Well, they should be the same. If I go ahead and factor 2x squared minus 7x plus 3, if 
I take the time to do it, my factors are going to be 2x minus 1 times x minus 3 equals 0. And those roots will be x equals 1 half and x equals 3. Draw the graph of y equals 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 in the grid. State the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts of the graph. Label them on the grid. All right. So based on my graphing calculator, I know it's going to cross the y-axis at a half and 3. It's going to cross the x-axis, sorry, cross the x-axis at a half and 3, the y-axis at 3. Uh, the vertex, I didn't really find, but it should be somewhere down here. That's what the graph looks like. My vertex, I think, if I were to do it, should be 1.75 and negative 3.125. If you tried it, that should be correct. And label this as y equals 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. All right. So we've got an x-intercept at a half and a 3 and a y-intercept at 3. All these things are very related. All right. Determining roots, zeros, and x-intercepts algebraically. Algebraically determine the zeros of the following functions. p at x equals 3x times 4x minus 9. So if I want to find the zeros of this function, what it means is I can let the function equal 0. So 0 equals 3x times 4x minus 9. To do this algebraically, all I have to do is let each variable factor equal 0. So 3x can equal 0, or 4x minus 9 can equal 0. Well, here I divide both sides by 3, so x is 0. Here I add 9 to both sides and then divide by 4. So the zeros of this polynomial function are 0 and 9 quarters. All right. The zeros of the polynomial function f at x, I'm going to let f at x equal 0, and I'm going to factor the common factor of 5x squared plus 15x minus 20 is 5. That leaves me x squared plus 3x minus 4. And if I want to finish factoring that then, that's a simple trinomial. It means I need to have x in the front of each bracket. What's the numbers? Multiply to 4, add to 3. Well, that's positive 4 and negative 1. Then I let each variable factor equal 0. So x plus 4 can be 0, or x minus 1 can equal 0. And solve those simple equations. x is negative 4, or x equals 1. There are the zeros of the polynomial function f at x. Example 5, algebraically determine the x-intercepts of the graph of the function with the equation y equals 3x squared minus 11x plus 10. State the y-intercept of the graph of the function. So it doesn't want me to graph these to find the x y-intercepts. It wants me to algebraically figure them out. So I've learned that by letting y equals 0, I get a quadratic equation. And the solutions to the equation, or roots of the equation, are the same as the x-intercepts of the function. So to do this algebraically, I have to factor. So I'm going to have to factor this using decomposition. So I'm going to keep my first term, 3x squared. Ask myself, what two numbers have a sum of the middle term, negative 11? A product of 3 times 10, which is 30. What two numbers add to negative 11 multiply to 30? Well, I think those two numbers are minus 5 and minus 6. So I decompose negative 11x as minus 5x and minus 6x. And then I factor by grouping. The common factor of the first term is an x. That leaves me 3x minus 5. The common factor of the last two terms is a minus 2. That leaves me 3x minus 5. I take out that common binomial factor of 3x minus 5, and I'm left with x minus 2. Now, how do I solve this to find the x-intercepts, well, I use my zero product law. So 3x minus 5 can equal 0, or x minus 2 can equal 0. So here I'm going to add 5 to both sides and then divide by 3. This one I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So there are the x-intercepts, 5 thirds and 2. 
how do I find the y-intercept? Well, I look at my original equation, and I have to let x equal 0. So to find a y-intercept, you let x equal 0. So y should equal 3 times 0 squared minus 11 times 0 plus 10. So 0 squared is 0 times 3 is 0. Negative 11 times 0 is 0 plus 10. So my y-intercept is 10. Great. Questions 1 through 9. Where you go.